Genero supports many database types. From GeneroDB to Informix to Oracle to DB2 and MySQL, you can write a Genero program that interacts with any of these databases, including others, using structured query language. In this video, we'll discuss the requirements for connecting to a database from your program. A database connection is a session of work opened by the program to communicate with a specific database server in order to execute SQL statements as a, speci a specific user. So as you can see here in this program, we have three connections to two different databases. And that indicates to you that within Genero, you can have either a unique session or a multi-session. In other words, you can connect simply to one a data source and end that data source before you connect to a different data source. Or you can work in a multi-session mode, which allows you to connect and disconnect to a multitude of data sources. So unique versus multi-session simply means the difference between uh, the standard unique session where you use the database keyword and the closed database to connect and disconnect versus the new multi-session allowing you connect to a variety of data sources and then use the set connection syntax to set the connection to which of the data sources you want to interact with. The disconnect statement will disconnect from the named data source. So to summarize, in unique session mode, you simply connect with the database instruction and that creates the current session. You disconnect from the current session with the closed database instruction, or when another database instruction is executed, or when the program ends. In multi-session mode, you open a session with the connect to instruction, and that creates a current session. You can open other connections with subsequent connect to instructions, and you can switch to a specific session by using the set connection instruction. This suspends other opened connections. Finally, you disconnect from the current, or from a specific, or from all sessions with the disconnect instruction. The end of the program also disconnects all sessions automatically. Now if we look at the examples uh, under multi-session, we can see here that in this little program we've connected to three, made three different connections. The first one is to stores one. The second one to stores one as SA with a specific session name. And then the third one, we've connected to stores two with a specific session name and passing user authentication information, the username and the password. Now there's more in the documentation on ways of handling uh, authenticating users. Uh, one of those would be in a string or one of those would be as part of the connect to statement. But you certainly can authenticate users um, in configuration files as well as by passing information to the connect to instruction. Um, among other ways. Now this uh, second example here shows those three connections and then we're also using a disconnect to disconnect from the current session. Then we're disconnecting from the session called SB and we're setting a connection to SA. In other words, we can use those statements to suspend and set the connection to the data source we want to work with at that time. Now if we contrast that to the unique session, we can see here in the second example we simply are uh, naming the database that we're connecting to and closing that database before issuing another database statement. These modes are not compatible. It is strongly recommended that you choose a mode, whether it be unique or multi-session, and not mix the modes. Now, when we said connect to stores one or database stores, we were indicating that we were connecting to something by a name, and that's called the database specification. So the database specification identifies the data source that you want to connect to. Now, for portability reasons, 
it's not recommended that you use a specific syntax from a database vendor, such as dbname at dbserver. Instead, what you want to do is use a simple symbol, such as that name store, stores one, uh, cus demo, whatever the name of your data source is that you want to use, and then configure the connection parameters in external resources files. Now, the, the FGL profile runtime configuration file does allow for you to identify uh, by name the uh, information about the data source uh, and the server that you're connecting to uh, that is named in your program. So let's look at those, just some examples there. Here we're looking at, um, again, we want to be, we want to work towards indirect database specification so that we're naming something in our program, but the information about it is being held elsewhere. So here we're, we're defining DB as the database and that's being passed in by the user. So when the program runs, the user is passing in the name of the database they want to connect to. Now when we issue this connect to DB instruction, we want to, um, we will be connecting to whatever that is resolved to in the configuration file. And the runtime configuration file where we can set this up for Genero is the FGL profile file. So again, if we were to name the data source in our program, here we're naming database stores, or we could connect to stores. In the FGL profile, there is uh, the dbi.database um, syntax allows you to identify the source information, the driver. You can also identify the username and password at this point in the FGL profile if you wish. Uh, but it allows you to set it up separately so that you can keep things very portable. So the database name in the program really becomes like an alias used to define the real database. Using this method, you can develop your application with the database name stores and connect to the real database stores one in a production environment. So for example, what that means is that this would all stay the same in the program, our connection, uh, or our, our statement to connect to the database stores. The FGL profile information may change. So our identifier of stores, again, we might change this at the point that we are pointing to a different data source but the program itself would stay the same. Now the driver information is going to be uh, specific to what the, the drivers are available within Genero, and the documentation will tell you specifically what driver um, to use. 